Hi loves and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. My name is Morgan. I make videos about luxury handbags, fashion, and lifestyle. So if that's your thing, please subscribe and turn on notifications. I upload twice a week and I would love to have you here. Today I'm going through my 2020 wish list. I wanted to do a little update on what I've added so far. My list has changed just a little bit and I want to kind of update you on where I am because the world ended up being a lot different than I thought it would be this year and I definitely fell back into some old habits. If you haven't seen my wish list video, I'll link it up here. You can check that out first and then come and see the update here. I had initially issued myself a challenge that I would only buy 20 new fashion items in 2020 and let me just say, I definitely failed. So. I'm a person who stress shops, I am a person who sad shops, I am definitely a person who just shops um, as a mood lifter. Maybe not the healthiest thing to do, I mean I also do the self work and like deal with my emotions, but shopping is definitely a coping mechanism for me and with everything going on in the world, my wedding being cancelled, definitely fell back into those old patterns of ordering a lot of things from ASOS. And I think I've gotten over that now, put myself together a little bit since uh, the beginning of the year. So all of that self work, I kind of was a little easier on myself, got myself to shop some fast fashion, but I'm kicking that habit for the end of the year. So yeah, that's the biggest part of this update. I definitely failed on that. I definitely feel like I need to get back to how I want to be spending my money on my shopping and that is quality pieces. I hate to say shopping sustainably because I feel like the sustainability community is quite like the vegan community where like if you're not a hundred percent then it's like you get attacked for not being sustainable and I'm on the journey and I want to do better but I'm not perfect and I have a long way to go so I say shopping sustainably with a little grain of salt because I'm on that journey and I'm trying to do better. Something that I do want to focus on more, I always find more satisfaction in the pieces that I've identified I want, watched for a long time, waited for a sale, and I finally get that piece. That Those pieces usually end up being star pieces in my wardrobe that stay year after year that I absolutely love. So I want to get back to shopping like that and being more considered in my purchases, but of course not being boring. Like I'm definitely not your typical sustainable shopper who focuses on neutrals and minimalism and things like that. I'm still a maximalist, that's for sure. I collect handbags. It's more than anyone needs and I recognize that, but I do want to get back to buying more quality over fast fashion, so I am going to work on kicking the fast fashion habit for the rest of the year. Shopping more quality pieces that I'll get multiple uses out of and will take me from year after year. But I had mentioned in my wishlist video some specific items, so I'm going to go through those and tell you have I added them, if they're still on my list, or if I'm not interested anymore. So let's get into that. I mentioned I wanted to add a beige cocoa handle to my collection. I have not added this bag yet, but it's still in the back of my mind. For some reason, it's kind of gotten pushed back. Recently, especially in the past three, four months, I've really wanted to diversify the pastel colored bags in my collection. I have a lot of pink. I even have some kind of teal colors covered, but I would love to add like a sky blue, a, like a sherbet orange a minty like lottery type green that's the one I'm on the hunt for the most and like a lilac and a pale yellow so those are five bags that eventually I would love to have in my collection I'm not saying I'm gonna get them all this year I'm definitely not getting them all this year that is taking more of a priority in what I'm looking for in my next bag but that being said if I did come across a cocoa handle that I love I know how difficult they are to get and I know that they go for more in the pre-loop markets not to say that I wouldn't add it if I didn't see it in store, but it's just not at the front of my mind anymore. The next item I had talked about is a Balmain style jacket. Now I have bad luck with the classic Balmain style. It doesn't suit my body shape very well. They have done other shapes that I like, but it's either the buttons are the wrong color or the jacket is the wrong color or I can't find it on sale because I don't think I would buy a Balmain jacket unless I could get it on a really good discount. kind of shifted away from that. I did pick up a Balmain piece that I think works so much better for Dubai. It was in my Net-A-Porter sale video and it is this little stretchy knitted crop top. What I love about this is it has the gold button so it has that Balmain detailing. You can throw this on with high-waisted jeans, with sweatpants when I'm at home. Like I've already gotten so much use out of this in my day-to-day -day life that I think this piece is so much more suited to Dubai that it kind of satisfies my want for that Balmain style in my wardrobe. Usually I'm traveling at least once a month and in the winter then I would get the use out of a Balmain blazer then 
or a balm on style blazer but for this winter I don't think I would get the you sink maybe next year I'll buy that instead of this year because I just don't see the point in putting the money into it this year when I'm really not going to get any use out of it I also mentioned that I wanted to add another big Louis Vuitton scarf to my wardrobe which I did and it's not as big as my other one it's actually a size I did not have yet which when I bought it I actually thought it was like my big one because they said this was the biggest size they have but I guess because mine was an artist collaboration maybe it was a special even larger size they did but it's this gorgeous like pastel-y scarf I think it's so beautiful I loved this corner of it where it's got this like lottery green and it says like Paris I'm obsessed with like a lottery green right now so just for size comparison this one is not stained sorry um, but the smaller one is this one is the 90 centimeter so corners matched up pretty much over here and then you get to the end of the scarf and you've still got another probably be like a 140 or 150 I'm not sure I probably should have measured it I do find that my larger one is more versatile and I would love to add another one of those in a different color combination in my wardrobe still but I've been really loving this one I think it's super nice to just kind of drape around the shoulders like this. I showed you a little hack on my Instagram where you can use like just a costume jewelry ring to like thread the scarf through and hold it together and it looks super cute. But I've got to kind of figure out how I'm going to use this more but I really do love it and I know that once I figure out more uses for it it's going to be a great piece that I'll have forever. I don't think I've ever gotten rid of any of my Louis Vuitton scarves so they're just great investment pieces for my wardrobe. Now I have a very exciting unboxing because I told you guys I wanted to get a pair of Amina Mawadi shoes and I really thought that I wanted to get the pink ones or the rainbow ones and then I just looked at my shoe wardrobe and I have all my pinks covered. There was no point in spending Amina Mawadi money on a pink pair when I have so many pink shoes in my wardrobe. As you probably know if you've been hunting for these, they're impossible to get. So I followed Elise Walker and they have personal shoppers in their store that can send you the shoes outside of the US. So that's how I ended up getting these. I followed them and I checked the stories every day and when I saw they posted they had a shipment of Amina Wadi, I immediately reached out and I said I want this pair and she sent them. It was such an amazing shopping experience. They came in under like three days and I've had them tucked away. But when I'm filming this, I'm just about to leave for London. I need to unbox them because I think I'm going to take them to London with me because we're going to be there during my birthday anyway. So let's get into this. comes with this pink dust bag, which I think is really pretty. And then we have, let me see if I can do this where I hold it up and show you. This is how they come wrapped. I did check them when they arrived, but I wrapped them back up exactly as they were. Let me just get this off. This is my gorgeous orange leather Amina Wadi pump. I'm so obsessed with this shoe. I think it is so beautiful. It's such a great heel height. I did try them on because I had never tried on a pair. My goal was to actually find them in store first so I could try on my correct size, but with everything that's happened this year, that's not going to be possible because. I don't even know if there's a store here in Dubai that carries them, but I figured it would be slim to none chance of me getting them this year if I waited to try them on in store, so I did order them. I did order a size 39. I could probably go to a 39.5, but these fit just fine. They are leather and they do have a stretchy bit in the back, so they might stretch a little. So I think a 39 will be good for the long term. Now, I had seen another YouTuber talk about how that these were not worth the price because the quality was not there. She reported that I think one of her pairs had like glue hanging off and it happened to me. I unboxed these shoes and there was glue hanging off this little diamante thing on the toe. I wanted to make sure to document this to show that that does happen and this is probably one of the most expensive shoes I own. Even my Chanel shoes most of them I got when Chanel has their sale or I get them duty free or the vat back when I travel. Other than my wedding shoes, I think this is actually the most expensive shoe I own and to have that experience of having glue hanging off of the shoe when it arrives, I have to say it's disappointing. I do think that there are quality issues and I know it's their marketing ploy to keep supplies low, so there's desire for them, but if you're going to do that, you better make sure that your shoes are at 100%. I will say that 
I don't know that I give my 100% recommendation for the brand. And it was all said and done with shipping and customs and things like that for these shoes. The amount that I paid, for that amount of money, I just expect the shoe to be perfect. I mean, to be quite honest, like if you're gonna charge that much for shoes, you better make sure that your quality is up to par. There are a lot of designer brands that you don't even spend a quarter of what this shoe costs, and they're much better made, so I'm gonna wear them and I'm gonna do a review after I've used them for a little while because I wanna give them a fair shot of trying them on and using them. Obviously, I kept them, I love them, I think they're beautiful, but I never want to recommend something to you guys where the experience is not like a hundred percent fantastic because especially when it costs this much so if you were thinking between this shoe and a Chanel shoe I would still kind of put my opinion behind a Chanel shoe versus this but I will keep you updated on how I get on with these in the future next item I wanted to add on my wish list was a Zimmerman dress and I added one this one and I'm absolutely obsessed with it I'll pop a picture up over here I've already worn it several times. It's a gorgeous linen, and I actually added a couple of other Zimmerman pieces. I'll pop some pictures up here as well. The sales were insane this year, so I managed to get all of my Zimmerman pieces at 50% off. I just love to share with you guys when I'm shopping sales, and it's often too quick to make a YouTube video about, so follow me on Instagram. I do post on my stories there when there's a great sale, either in-store or online that I'm shopping from. I always want to help you guys get a good deal too. So make sure you're watching my stories and looking out for that. This is actually the exact dress I wanted. I saw it go on sale online for like 30% and I still thought it was a bit pricey. It's Bloomingdale's here in Dubai Mall and I was like, let me just go peek around because their selection online is actually different from in store. When I went to the store, I tried this on and I tried on a bunch of other things. Everything was 50% off. And I actually had to like cut it down to decide like prioritize the pieces. This was the last one available and it was in my size. It was just like meant to be. It's a longer length Zimmerman dress, which I didn't have in my collection. I have shorter Zimmerman dresses, so I was very happy to have a different length. I love the yellow. I think it's so beautiful and I love the flowers. And I really think linen just never goes out of style. Like linen you can wear from summer to summer. You're, you've seen it this summer, you're gonna see it next summer. This is one of those dresses that until it falls apart, you're gonna see in my wardrobe. I don't know that I'm looking to add any more Zimmerman this year, but definitely next year. Zimmerman is one of those brands that I like to add a piece or two every year when they go on sale. They're super pricey, but they're so well made. I'm really just such a fan of the brand that if I did see some more on sale this year, maybe I would pick them up, but yeah, I'm satisfied with my Zimmerman pieces for this year and I'm super happy that I got them all 50% off. Also said I wanted to add a new pair of sneakers to my wardrobe and I did. They are so cute. They're little Chanel sneakers. These I also got 40% off when Chanel had their sale, which I also put in my story. So you guys, you really need to be following me if you want to know the deals quickly. Because the Chanel sale, the good stuff sells out within the first couple of days. So I always let you know when I hear about the sale and when I'm going to the sale. These are so much more comfortable than my black Chanel sneakers. These are more of like an athletic style of sneaker. Black leather ones from Chanel, I think still need more breaking in because they're a little uncomfortable on the back of the ankle, but these have no issues from the first wear. So I highly recommend looking into the sporty style of like Chanel sneakers because they're super comfortable. Next item on my list was the Louis Vuitton on the go tote, which I did add and I'm so happy I did. I literally said in that video that I was waiting for them to do like a black or a color that I loved and ask and you shall receive. They did a black one with gold hardware. This is my favorite hardware with a black bag. This is gonna be one of those like luggage pieces that I have in my collection forever. The next thing I wanted to add on my list was my Chanel Mini and I was so happy. I think this is the next video I posted after. So in my wishlist video I had mentioned that I had passed on this bag and I made that video in between trips. So at that time the world was safe to travel and the next time I went to London on my way back they still had this in Heathrow duty free and I was like that was a month later like it's not often that Chanel styles stay around for more than a month like especially a mini in a tweed like this. So. I kind of took it as a sign, you know, I thought about this bag for a month. Check the pre-love market daily from when I first saw this bag to the time I bought it. I never saw it pop up. So I was like, you know what, like I'm probably not going to 
be able to find this bag on the pre-love market. The tweeds, I feel like people really buy to keep. They're quite a collector's piece. Pop my video up here if you want to see my unboxing of this and know all of the details, but I'm so happy to have this in my collection. It has been such an amazing bag so far, and the mini is truly one of my favorite styles from Chanel, and I'm so happy to have it again in my collection. The other thing I mentioned is that I was having rainbow hoop earrings made, and those are on pause because they couldn't find all the colors I wanted in the right sizes. I think I'm going to just have to find a jewelry brand that already does them and buy them from them. But the only problem is, is most of them come with blue sapphires in there. And when you're engaged to an Indian and you learn more about how gemstones affect you and things like that, blue sapphires either raise you up in life or lower you in life. Whether you believe in that or not, it's something that you can't get out of your mind when you go to look at jewelry when you're marrying into an Indian family. Just can't bring myself to buy the rainbow hoops with the dark blue sapphires in them because I know they can be super polarizing and I really don't know how they affect me and I need to find that out first. If they are fine for me, then I might consider going for that. If they're not fine for me, then I need to find rainbow hoops that don't use sapphires. Maybe they use a different blue stone, like an aquamarine or a topaz or something like that. I would be fine with that. I really don't care what stone it is. It's just that's the only thing holding me up. They say you can test your jewelry pieces by putting them under your pillow before you wear them. And if they give you nightmares, then it's not something that suits you. And if you have fine dreams, then it's fine. I just need to figure that out about the blue sapphire so I can see if rainbow hoops with a blue sapphire included will be fine for me. <laughs> now what I'm looking for for the rest of 2020. Now, the one major change that I said I'm going to make is I'm slowing it down on the fast fashion. I'm really going to try to get back to buying more thoughtfully, buying the quality pieces, reusing them, styling them in different ways. I really need to get back to that. I also think that the Balmain Blazer is kind of off my list for this year. I'm not actively looking for it anymore. I also really have my eye on the Prada re-edition. I've had my eye on it literally for most of the year and I haven't bought it because I can't decide what color. <laughs> like the pink one the most, of course, because I love pink, but I have so many pink bags. I'm trying to see if maybe there's another color that I would get good use out of that's not pink. I definitely want to do a fun pastel color or something different. They did just come out with the leather ones. I don't know if I'm keen on the leather. I haven't tried it on. So I think I'm just going to have a shop in Prada while I'm in London and see if anything really speaks to me and I really think that I can style it in many ways for my wardrobe. Also I'm keeping a lookout for designer handbags in the pastel rainbow. First one on my list that I'm actively looking for is that Lottere minty green bag. I've seen a few designers do them. Chloe has the test bag in the green, but the green is not perfect so I decided against that. And Bulgari has it in a green, but the style that I want from Bulgari is not in the green. <laughs> so saw someone on Instagram unbox earmuffs from Chanel and I'm obsessed. Earmuffs are my favorite way to keep my head warm when I'm going around in the winter time. I have the same pair that I've had since college. I bought them on an insane sale from this little shop that I stumbled across. I would love to have a designer pair because I know I would get the use out of them. That is one winter item. I mean, look, you guys know I love headbands. So earmuffs, really not a far cry from my favorite accessory. Actually, in the long run, I would get the use out of them. I'm keeping an eye out for them when I'm in London, so we'll see. I don't know if I'll add them this year or next year, but it's something on my radar. Also, I'm looking to add more linen. Um, Dubai doesn't get cold, so you're not going to see a ton of winter pieces. I might add one nice sweater because I like to add one nice sweater every year that's like a designer piece that carries me from season to season. I haven't seen one yet that I love, but if I come across one, I might do that. And I also want to get a few House of CB pieces. They are on the more affordable end, but they're not quite like fast fashion. Their dresses are such great quality. I've had some of their pieces for years now and they're so great for occasions. They've done this great pink linen suit and I would love to add that. That's something I want to get while I'm traveling as well. So I do want to add a couple of their pieces, but I consider them almost designer because I personally feel that their quality is higher than the price that they charge. I think that they're kind of outside of that high street category because the pieces do last from year to year. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like and consider subscribing. You can follow me on Instagram to see how I style my pieces and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.